Howdy, I'm Will Stockdale. I'm fixing to tell you some of the things that happened to me in the draft, which I knew about and didn't get into in the first place. Because when the draft man come to take me, Pa chased him off in the property and then put barbed wire all around to keep him off. <laughs> I guess that I would have never gone nowhere. Only after that, a whole lot of men come out, and one of them was a man Pa knowed, and he talked to Pa real reasonable for a while, and finally Pa put away his rifle and said, okay, I could go. So I went. <laughs> Juice harp. <laughs> Whoa, mule, you kicking mule, whoa, mule, I say. Well, I ain't got time to kiss you now. My mules are run away. <laughs> I took my wife to the barnyard and I set her down to supper. Well, she got choked on the turkey leg and stuck her nose in the butter. Stuck her nose in the butter. Stuck her nose in the butter. Well, she got choked on a turkey leg and stuck her nose in the butter. <laughs> Well, Lynn, the draft men took me into Callville, and there was five or six others there going into the draft, some town boys, and we was put on this bus and rode up through Pinehurst and Macon. I bet you it took us a half hour to even get through that Macon. And then on up through more towns till finally we come to this place called Fort Thompson. Now, this fella here is named Irving. The draft men put him in charge of the whole bunch of us, and I thought that was a right nice thing for him to do because Irving's been sick. I heard this fella Lucky tell the others that Irving had ROTC. <laughs> oh, yeah. He still looks kindly peaky, don't he? So it was a pretty decent thing for the draft men to put him in charge of us and make him feel good and everything. Hey, get back on your bunk draft, Dodger. I don't want any trouble out of you. You understand? Sure, Irving, you bet. <laughs> sure. So there I was in the draft. I wasn't too happy, though, with Irving mad at me and everything. I mean, I heard a fella say one time that this year was a peacetime draft. So I didn't think I ought to go around arguing with anybody if I could help it. Howdy. Was you going to take this bottom bunk? Was it showing? Yeah. Usually in the Army, it's first come, first served. I was here this morning, only it took them so now to find uniforms the right size for me. Sure, you go right ahead and take it. I didn't know. No, it, it, I should have left something on the bunk to show I was here. That's the army way of doing it. But I didn't. Now you go ahead. No, it, it serves me right. You take it. I was no, just setting. I'll take the top. Listen. Back home, I can't sleep next to the floor no how. I always heist my bed up about five foot with brick bats under it, and then use a chair to crawl up into it. No, I don't deserve the bottom one. I'll just, let me. No, just because I'm short, that don't mean I can't. I, no. Get your hand off that bat! <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> well, I've stood just about as much as I'm gonna stand out of you. Irving, I wasn't doing Well, can't nothing. you find somebody on size to pick on? You gotta pick on a little peanut like this. You watch your mouth. Why don't you mind your own business anyhow? Now listen, Shorty, I was Shorty. just trying to help. Shorty, who are you calling Shorty? Who asked you anything anyhow? Who? Now listen here, Shorty, I'm the one that does the asking around here. Like, why ain't you plowboys got your bunks made up yet? <laughs> you know it's a half out of taps? Well, we're making them up, Irvin, as fast as we can. Irvin, Irvin, give them time. Beds are strange to plowboys. They used to sleep them with the hogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet the hogs are real lonesome tonight. <laughs> Hi, Stockdale. <laughs> you hear that? The hogs is lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let's get those bunks made up plow. Now, boys. And that includes you too, Shorty. Come on, Shorty. What do you want to go and laugh with him for when he's cussing us and calling us plowboy? He's been sick, and you ought not to get mad at anybody that ain't their selves. Oh. 
I'm Will Stockdale. Oh, hi, I'm Ben Whitledge. Howdy, Ben. Wise guy. If he's so sick, how come they took him in the draft? Maybe the doctors was his friends. <laughs> <laughs> he is sick, Ben. I heard Lucky say it. Irvin had R-O-T-C. <laughs> For a whole year, he had it. What? R-O-T-C. That's why they put him in charge. They felt sorry for him. I guess he still must have a touch in it, of it in him, the way, the way he walks so stiff-like and wears them dark glasses. Well, ROTC ain't a sickness. It ain't. It's training, officer training. It is. ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corporation. <laughs> if Irvin just had a year of it and he never finished the course, then he don't rank no higher than anybody else. I guess I don't know how ROTC works all right. You see, there's different kinds. There's cavalry ROTC, infantry ROTC, infantry, that's the best. Because they're the ones that do the real fighting. All the men in my family was infantry. The rest aren't nothing but just helpers, that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always thought. The infantry is the best one. It sure is. Listen, there just ain't any comparison. What about the war between the states? What about that? Yeah, what about that? <laughs> ben, Irvin ain't sick. No sicker than anybody else. Then, then he ain't got no excuse for cussing and talking ugly to us. Well, that's what I've been telling you, Will. <laughs> okay, I open. Irvin? Come on, let's play. Yeah? Would you mind standing up a minute and taking off them glasses? <laughs> Why? I aim to bust you up some. <laughs> Well, Stockdale, there are five. No, there's six of us and just one of you. Two. Oh. <laughs> well, 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 well. Okay, plowboy. Oh! Ben, are you sure about that ROTC? Hey, get him! Come on, let's I'll get this Sure was a pretty good fight, won't it, Ben? <laughs> we shouldn't have done it. Oh, we whooped them fire. They won't be mad at us. <laughs> what ain't that? Listen, we were saying how the infantry is the best and everything, weren't we? Yeah. Then we want to get a sign of the infantry, don't we? Yeah. Oh, doggy, we never will now. You think the infantry wants folks to act like this? <laughs> You'll see. They'll hear about this fighting. You know what they'll do? Who put us in the Navy in them little white uniforms? <laughs> or maybe even the Coast Guard. Or, or the Air Force. But I don't understand why. Listen, let me explain it to you. Sit down. Sit down a minute. Let me get my box. Just sit down and listen to me now. Listen carefully. A real soldier, an infantry soldier, why, he don't have to go around getting into any little barracks fights. He just got off the battlefield with his real fighting. But Ben, we ain't been on no battlefield. I know we ain't. Don't you understand? The infantry wants folks that can take it and keep their mouth shut the way a man ought to do. Ain't you ever seen no war movies? <laughs> well, sure I have, Ben, but there ain't no battlefields around these parts. I know there ain't. Hey! Man, what happened here? The heat. The passed out from the heat. Just like flies. Yeah, I'll bet. Get him out of here. You'll see. You'll see. Them little white uniforms for the Air Force. This here's your assignment. Our assignment. You lucky dogs, you're going into the Air Force. The Air Force. <laughs> I told you so. They heard about this fight and they, they didn't waste no time. The Air Force. But, Ben, we didn't finish the fight hardly five minutes ago. <laughs> Serves me right. I, I should have known better than getting a fight the very first evening. But he said we was lucky dogs for going into our force. The Air Force? Oh. <laughs> well, they shipped us out on the train a couple of days later and rode us for two whole days. And Ben was about as miserable as a man could get. I got right worried about it. There's the train. That's all right. <laughs> ben, the others are having a mighty fine time back there. 
they're singing and shouting Roger and Wilco and all like that. Roger. Wilco! <laughs> Look, Will, you know what they call men in the Air Force? They call them airmen. I didn't like it when they called you airman. What's something out of a dang funny book? Airman. Well, he took on like that right through the train ride and right through the bus ride after that and right on through till we was at the Air Force Base in our new barracks. And right there is where Sergeant King come into my adventures. K-I-N-G. King. And this is my barracks. And you men are going to be here for about a week or so while they classify it. Now, this is just a stopping place for you, but it's home for me. So please, gentlemen, please keep it spick and span. Because when the barracks is spick and span, the captain's happy. And when the captain's happy, I'm happy. And when I'm happy, you're happy. <laughs> it's, it's a cycle, kind of, so don't nobody break it. <laughs> now, you can get your bedding from the supply room. Are there any questions? Roger. We'll call. <laughs> Remember, gentlemen, I'm a peaceful man with a peaceful way of life. Got my stripes, my pay, my barracks. I joined up for security, gentlemen. And the first man that makes me feel insecure <laughs> gets his neck broke. That's all. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Will Stockdale. Mm -hmm. I heard what you said out there about this being your home and all, mm -hmm. and it is a right nice barracks. I mean, it's the nicest barracks i ever seen. So I wouldn't want you to get the idea that it was because we didn't like your barracks or because we didn't like you. That ain't the case at all. See, it's just that Ben's whole family's been in the infantry. That's Ben Whitledge, my buddy, sitting out there on his duffel bag. So, naturally, he don't want to be in no Air Force. <laughs> See, it ain't nothing personal against you that we're leaving. It's just that the infantry is the real soldiers, and the Air Force ain't nothing but helpers. <laughs> Air Force ain't nothing but helpers. That's right. Look at the war between the states. <laughs> war between the states. <laughs> So, I thought I ought to check with you before we left. You know, so you wouldn't waste no time looking for us or anything. Could you show us the way? <laughs> the way? To the infantry. Oh. To the infantry. That's right. Why do they send all the bums and idiots to my barracks? Why do they send all the eight balls and expect me to make human beings out of them? I don't know, do they? <laughs> I try. Heavens knows I try. It sure must be a mess having nothing but bums and idiots. <laughs> I'd like to help you out, but... But you want to go to the infantry. That's right. <laughs> You'd like to help me out. I sure would, Sergeant. You're going to help me out. Now, what do you think of that? I'm going to make you permanent latrine orderly. No, <laughs> not just latrine. Permanent barracks orderly. Now, what do you think of that? Well, that sounds right fine, Sergeant. It is right fine. You don't think I'd make anybody permanent barracks orderly if I didn't think they were uh, trustworthy and uh, intelligent. <laughs> oh, I'd sure like to do it, Sergeant, but I was kindly set on helping Ben get in the infantry. <laughs> He's awful miserable. How about me? Don't you think I'm awful miserable? <laughs> Surrounded by nothing but morons and misfits. And bums and idiots. <laughs> well, I don't know. Please, boy. Well, maybe I could try it out just for a little while. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but Ben... Don't you worry about Ben. He'll be taken care of. Don't you worry about anything. You know, that latrine ain't been cleaned proper since the last group left here. So why don't you go right in and start right into work? Yes, sir. That's a good boy. <laughs> you know you look a whole lot better already than you did when I first come in here. <laughs> I feel a whole lot better. A whole lot. Well, 
it just goes to show you that good things happen to you when you're least expecting them. <laughs> I stayed back orderly that whole week, and I done a right good job of cleaning things up, too, because nobody ever said I was trustworthy and intelligent before. <laughs> and Sergeant King was right happy, too. He looked real pleased. Boy, oh, boy. Yes, sir. What will the captain seize this barracks? What will the captain seize? Sergeant, don't I have to get classified like the others are doing? Classified? Boy, you've been classified. <laughs> Anybody that can do the kind of job you're doing shouldn't be doing anything else. <laughs> yes, sir. Just uh, don't say anything about it in the orderly room and everything will be all right. I got some friends, you know. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. <laughs> yes, sir. Bill, you were born to this work. <laughs> I knew it the minute I set eyes on you. Yes, sir. <coughs> well, didn't that make me feel pretty good? <laughs> I scrubbed, and I painted, and I washed, and I polished. And finally, on Saturday morning, we had this big inspection with the captain himself coming around to look at things. Here he comes, Will. Hurry up and get over by your bunk. <laughs> Hurry up. Here he comes. Get up. Barracks ready for inspection, sir. Hmm? Why, this is splendid, Sergeant King, splendid. I've never seen the barracks so clean. Thank you, sir, thank you. It's just a matter of giving the men the proper supervision. Uh, commendable job. <laughs> Lieutenant, look at this floor. I scrubbed it all day yesterday. <laughs> Stack down. <laughs> Don't credit me none, sir. It was all Sergeant King's doing. You're in attention, Stockdale. And the bunks have been painted. I've done that Thursday afternoon. <laughs> that was Sergeant King's idea, too. You painted all these bunks yourself. And the footlockers, too. But I spend most of my time in the latrine. <laughs> oh, Sergeant King said he never seen a man so interested in latrines as you are. You go in there and look at them faucets. I polished them so hard they don't say hot and cold no more. <laughs> Is this a man on company punishment? No, sir. N not exactly, Heck sir. No, sir. I'm permanent barracks orderly. <laughs> permanent barracks orderly? Don't credit me none, though. It's all Sergeant King's idea. <laughs> he even fixed it so I don't have to get classified nor nothing. What? <laughs> but don't you worry about it, sir. He's got friends. <laughs> Now, don't be modest, Sergeant. <laughs> Sir, I've been wanting to tell you about what a good Sergeant he is. So you won't be on his back all the time, the way he says you are. <laughs> only, only you've been in the orderly room all week, and he told me, you know, not to, be, not to be sure not to say nothing in the orderly room. So I'm right glad you come out of there this morning. Because I guess that he's about the best dang Sergeant there is in the whole dang die for. <laughs> Sergeant King, I'd like to speak to you. At ease, you men. Yes. Well, now, ain't that about the nicest captain you ever see? <laughs> and I'm sure glad I could do some good for Sergeant King, because I figure if someone does a favor for someone, then the second someone ought to try to do a favor for the first someone. Why, I bet you that if everybody in the world done favors for one another the way Sergeant King and me done, why, pretty soon, there wouldn't be no problems at all. And everybody would... You didn't have to do it. You really didn't have to do it. I know, but you've done a whole lot for me, and I thought I could help you out some. Look, boy, we got to get you classified. Captain says that if you ain't out of this barracks with the same group you came in with, you're going to be here for your whole hitch. Two whole years in my barracks. If I got a barracks, that is. You mean I, I can't help you out no more? You help me more than I can stand. Boy, we got to get you classified and shipped to some school a thousand miles away from here. But I... That's orders. Come the end of this week, we got to have you classified. 
don't feel bad, Sergeant. I bet if they do ship me off away off somewhere, I can come back every now and again and see you. <laughs> and that ain't all I done to Happy Mouth. You just wait and see what I done the next time. <laughs> Well, anyhow, Monday morning, I got started with classification. Have you ever been classified? <laughs> there was this one test where I was supposed to write down what I heard on the radio, only I didn't hear a blame thing. And then when I did hear something, I still didn't hear nothing, because all there was was a bunch of dips and dots. But... After a day or two, I got the hang of things, and with Sergeant King prompting me and showing me copies of the test before I took them, I guess I was doing pretty good on it all. They was this one test I done real good on. It was a puzzle, kindly, where I was supposed to put these two thingamajigs together. The fellow that gave me the test said nobody would ever done it in less than a minute. But I done it just as easy as you please, and I reckon I broke some kind of record. The only thing was, this year Hawkins seemed to think that something won't quite right someplace. But Sergeant King reasoned with him for a while, and pretty soon he come to see our point of view. So everything was going right fine. I don't mind admitting I was kind of proud of myself. Yes, sir, now. Vocabulary? Mm hmm Arithmetic is a great one, right? I think we're going to have you classified. Yes, sir, I think we're going... You got to see the psychiatrist. The who? The psychiatrist. Now, he's just a nice man who wants to chat with you for a while. I just don't want you to get nervous about it. He's going to talk to you to see what kind of personality you got, that's all. He's a very nice man. Come in. Major psychiatrist. <laughs> Hi, Dick. Where are you from? Georgia. <laughs> Georgia? It's not much of a state, is it? Well, I don't live all over the state. I just, I just live in this one little place, in it? That's where Tobacco Road was, Georgia. Not around my section. I ain't never seen no tobacco plant in no road. <laughs> Maybe you're from a different part than me. I've never been there. What's more, I don't think I'd ever go there. What's your reaction to that? Well, I don't know. I don't think I'd ever live in your rotten state. What about that? Well, things has got right crowded around home, <laughs> so it don't make much difference to me whether you live there or not. <laughs> not that we wouldn't be mighty glad to have you. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Are you always so impertinent to authority? Oh, I wasn't aiming to be impertinent. How was your childhood? Well, I was kind of young. <laughs> your mother? She was strict? No. Always threatening punishment, hovering over you? No, just the opposite. Oh, she was never there. That's right. You resented her neglect, didn't you? No. You hated her? No, I I remember. Didn't. Try to remember. Well, I'll try if you want me to, but she died when I was born. So I don't hardly see how I can remember hating her. <laughs> she died before you were born, then. Why, you could have told me that in the beginning. Well, I tried to, but you kept ending my sentences for me. <laughs> Uh, your father, uh, did he, uh, beat you? Oh, yes, sir. Hard? Sure. I remember one time he took me out behind the pig pen and leaned me over the fence, and I'm dog fire ever got such a beating in my life. He whips you frequently? There can't nobody beat like my pa can. You hit him? No. 
I got an uncle I hate, though. <laughs> Every time he comes out to the house, he's always wanting to wrestle the mule. And the mule gets all wore out, and he gets all wore out. I don't really hate him, though. It's just that I ain't exactly partial to him. <laughs> Did I ask you about your uncle? I thought you liked to talk about hating people. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about, uh, girls. Uh, how do you like them? What girls is that, sir? Oh, just girls, just any girls. Well, I don't like just any girls. I mean, there's this one old girl back home and they got hair hardly no longer than a hound dog. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, no, now look, uh, when I say girls, I don't mean any one particular girl. I mean, uh, girl. <laughs> the whole man-woman relationship. Uh, didn't your father ever talk to you about it? Yes, sir. Uh, don't you remember what he told you? Well, <laughs> what did he tell you? <laughs> well, there was this one about these two traveling salesmen. <laughs> breaks down in the middle of this terrible stop. stop, and they come running up to this farm. Stop. You heard it already? No, I ain't heard it already. Uh, well, what'd you stop me for? It's a right clever story. See, they come running up to this farmhouse, and they rap on the door, and this girl, she... Go, go. You're normal. Listen, if you don't want to talk about girls, son, why don't you come down to the barracks some night? The younger fellas is all time cracking spicy stories and all like that. I do not want to talk about girls. I do not want to talk about girls. Now here, get out. Get out. I do not want to talk about girls. Sir, I know it ain't my place to be giving advice, but I don't think you'd be so confused about girls if you'd go out with them some. <laughs> They're right nice when you get to know them. <laughs> He's a good old boy. Bill, how did you do? Let me see. He wrote normal with three exclamation marks. Did I pass? Oh, you sure did, boy. You sure did. Now, all you got to do is take the eye test. And you look to me like an A number one candidate for gunnery school. Gunnery school? I can already shoot a rifle. Now, back. listen. I got to go and get briefed by the captain on tomorrow's inspection. Now, I want you to take these papers right back to the barracks. Now, you're to do nothing tonight but rest your eyes. Hear me? Just rest your eyes. And tomorrow morning, right after inspection, we run you down to that little old eye test, and by dog, by tomorrow night, we got you out of here. So just rest your eyes, here. Yeah? Just rest them. Good boy. Your eyes. Just... <laughs> well, it sure done me good to see Sergeant King so happy like that. I felt bad, too, though, because I'd be going to gunnery school and, you know, not seeing him no more. I guess that he was about my best friend in the whole drive, except, of course, for... Will! Man! How you doing? How did... I ain't hardly seen you all week. What have you been doing? Classified. Where you going? Well, Sergeant King says if I pass the eye test, I'll be going to gunnery school. That's where I'm going. I just passed the eye test, and the fellow over there said, like, I've been going to the gunnery school. How about that? How about that? Ain't you sad no more about not being in the infantry? Oh, heck no. Why, the Air Force is the real soldiers. The infantry and the rest are nothing but helpers, that's all. <laughs> Say they are. Why, sure, this is the air age, Will. How about that? How about that? Now, look, you run right down there and take that eye test right now, you hear? It's that little building right down there in the line there. All right. And then we'll both be in the same class at gunnery school. And how about that? <laughs> how about that? What kind, what kind of wildy dow is this? I repeat, Private, what kind of rowdy dow is this? Rough housing in the streets. Uh, uh, sir, ma'am, uh, we weren't rough housing. Who knocked your caps off, little elves? <laughs> Uh, no, no, sir, ma'am, just that we're feeling happy because we're going to school together. That's no excuse for... <laughs> What's the matter with this one? <laughs> Nothing, sir, ma'am. Get an attention. We're sending this to school? Uh, yes, yes, sir, ma'am. Uh, if he passes the eye test, he'll be going to gunnery school. As what? A target? <laughs> no, ma'am. Let's have no more rowdy down. Do you understand? No more. Uh, yes, sir, ma'am. <laughs> What's the matter with you? 
Don't you know enough to stand in detention and salute an officer? She was a woman. Well, sure she was a woman. Ain't you never hear to the Women's Air Force? You mean they got one, too? <laughs> what are they doing? Against ours? <laughs> Why, no, Will, they're with us. They're with us 100%. And we got to salute them? Well, the officers would do. Didn't you hear that lecture about military courtesy? Well, I'm dogged if I ever heard of saluting no woman. She wasn't a woman, she was a captain. I seen a captain standing there, so I come to attention, I saluted. A captain, that's all. A woman captain. A captain captain. But, dog, Will, don't you understand nothing? When you're in uniform, you ain't supposed to notice whether a person is a man or a woman, or what? A captain is a captain, a major is a major, and a general is a general. Ben, you mean you didn't notice she was a woman? <laughs> I've seen a captain standing there, a captain, that's all I've seen. Well, dog it, Ben, I know she is a woman right off. <laughs> You know, sometimes, Will, sometimes I don't think they should have taken you in the draft know-how. Well, I mean, I thought she was a woman. <laughs> but if Ben said she won't, I guess she won't. So I went on over and took the eye test like Ben told me to, and when it was all over with, it was supper time, so I went straight on over to the mess hall. Excuse me. She's getting classified. Appreciate it. Ah, uh, here he is. Here's my boy. Would you mind? Adam. Howdy, Irvin. Sit down, Lucky. Hi, Will. How are you? Yes, sir. You ought to have seen the way my boy breezed through those tests. One, two, three. Bim, bam, boom. Gunnery school. That's where he'll be going. That's great. That's where we're going. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tomorrow morning, right after inspection, we run him down to that little old eye test. And by tomorrow night, he's out of here. I'll already took the eye test. You already took the eye test? Ben showed me where it was. I just had it. So where are the papers? How did you do? I fell in there, kept the papers because I was the last test. Well, you passed it, didn't you? Did you pass it? I don't know. They had this sign on the wall that I was supposed to read with all kinds of peculiar words on it. Things like fun lip and finer. <laughs> but then the fellow said I was just supposed to read it one letter at a time, and oh. that made it a whole lot easier. Well, you read it right, didn't you? You, you passed, didn't you, Will? I don't know. Hey, the fellow, fellow. Fellow. There's that new WAF captain. I hear she's a real tornado. The colonel's showing her around. Women officers. That sure is one thing I don't cotton to. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. What about you, Will? What do you think of them? Think of what? Women officers. Mm. Women officers? Yeah. I ain't never seen one. <laughs> well, there's one there. You can see her, can't you? I see a colonel and a captain. That's all. A woman captain? A captain, that's all. Will, ain't you got eyes? Now, look, Will. Listen to me. I want you to turn around very slowly, look very carefully, and tell me exactly what you see. <laughs> I see... A colonel and a captain, that's all. <laughs> but the captain's a woman, Captain, ain't she? Not much of a woman, but a woman, ain't she? I don't notice whether it's a man or a woman or what. All I see is a captain, that's all. Oh, he never passed no eye test. No. No, no, no. What ails you, Sergeant? He ain't gonna be What's glad with you. Easy, Sergeant. Come on. He's gonna lose me my bags. Get me out of here. Come on, Get come on. Don't you feel good? He ain't gonna do this to me. He ain't gonna Easy, do it. I'm old and I'm tired. Easy, my constitution okay. needs peace and security. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Ain't you gonna finish your supper? <laughs> Excuse me, I can't eat. <laughs> Maybe if I can get a tonic or something down into him, he'll feel a whole lot better. <laughs> What's going on, Ben? How's the sergeant? Will, I've been waiting for you. Come here, quick. Listen. Listen, they're plotting against you in there. Irvin and Lucky and the sergeant, I heard them. 
The sergeant said how you was going to lose him his barracks. So Irvin said, why don't they take you to town and I can get you drunk? So you missed tomorrow's inspection and end up in the guardhouse. But then why should the sergeant... Oh, there he is. There's my boy. How you feeling, sergeant? You better now? Oh, much better, much better. Yes, sir. But Ben said he heard you say... Ben talks too much. Attention, you. Yes, sir, I feel fine. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to take you into town for a little celebration. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, Quiet that's my... Quiet, I... you. And that's an order from a man of superior rank. Come on, boy, the drinks are on me. Oh, I appreciate it, Sergeant. But couldn't Ben come along to celebrate with us? No, Ben's got a special job to do. The colonel's inspecting tomorrow, and Ben's got to get the barracks all shaped up spick and span. Oh. Remember what I told you? Remember I'll come what? back early and help you, Ben. Yeah, you'll be back early then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me, Bill, uh, you much of a drinker? No, I ain't never drunk no store whiskey at all. Never no store whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> oh, then you'll appreciate it more. Yes, sir, this is going to be one party you ain't never going to forget. This is going to be an A number one four-star farewell celebration party. And when I say farewell, I do mean farewell. <laughs> Else's. I say my glass is bigger than everybody else's. You're the guest of honor, ain't you? That's right. Here's a toast to the guest of honor. So wake yeah. up, guest of honor. How'd you like it? Well, it's a mite sharper than that Pepsi Cola they got over at the canteen. <laughs> well, let's have another toast to the guest of honor. Yeah. Here's to the guest of honor. The yes, guest of honor. honor. <laughs> Ain't we gonna toast you and Lucky and Irvin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's to Irvin. Irvin. Irvin, to me. <laughs> Believe I'll play the big troller some. <laughs> Sarge, I didn't eat much supper. The trouble is, Sarge, he's drinking all the same kind of stuff. Well, I don't have any money to buy anything else. Some beer? Oh. And here's some wine. All right. You're gonna mix? Oh. You know, you've been drinking the same kind of stuff all night, and that's gonna make you sick. You gotta mix it up. A little variety in it. That's right. Variety, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Ain't everybody gonna drink? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. sure everybody. Yeah. Now, Sergeant King, the best dang sergeant in the whole dang die force, dang it. <laughs> oh. You sure you never drank any whiskey before? Never no store whiskey, just some old stuff my uncle makes. Stuff? 
Corn and grain and kerosene. Kerosene? Kerosene. Just a mite for flavor. <laughs> Where are we going to get kerosene? Uh, I got some lighter fluid. Give it here. Lighter? Yes, sir. My boy wants kerosene. Bad dog, he gets kerosene. <laughs> It's familiar. Quite <laughs> <Right> familiar. <laughs> you know, I ain't never been a guest of honor before. Hey, there's an infantryman. Hey, infantry. You fly boys call me? Sure yeah. did. Have a drink. We'll celebrate. Fine. Thanks a lot. Sit right down. I ain't never seen fly boys so like the infantry before. Well, heck, you are helpers, ain't you? <laughs> helpers? Why, well, you guys got it easier than anybody. Even easier than the Navy. Why, thank you. We sure appreciate that. Not easy. Boy, in the papers it says that the place we're at is the dirtiest, filthiest, muddiest, cruddiest place in the whole United States. Ah, the papers said the same thing about our place. Oh. Well, you guys is heaven compared to where we're at. Oh, that's mighty nice of you to say. Listen, Bob. <laughs> they march us 15 miles every single day. 20 miles they march us. Three. 25 when it rains. Well, you don't pull half the dirty details that we pull. Details? Well, you guys don't even really know what details is. What? Why, there ain't a guy in the whole air corps that can do details like anybody in the infantry. Listen, oh, oh, you, God. if you're so... On the infantry, why don't you shove off and stop drinking Air Force liquor? Sorry, Joe. Yeah, get going, dog. Yeah, hey, no Air Force city can talk that way about the infantry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It is familiar. Sergeant King. It's taking on pretty late, Sergeant. And I promised Ben I'd come back in time to help him clean. Would you mind if I leave now? I'll see you back to backs, okay? Uh, appreciate the celebration. <laughs> God, God, you wear stuff, Gail. Oh! God. We were supposed to have them thrown in the car house, weren't we, Sergeant? Sergeant outsmarted us. I sure hated to leave, but if I'd have stayed much longer, I'd have got a mite woozy. <laughs> so I come on back to the backs and give Ben a hand. And in the morning before inspection, I worked on this special idea I had to welcome the Colonel. It ain't every day the Colonel himself comes to inspect. Well, I, I, I don't get it. Well, see, I got this treadle kindly for the Colonel to step on. And this here wire here goes off to the phonograph in Sergeant King's room. And this one here goes up. And I got a mess of stuff up there. <laughs> It'll be a great welcome, Ben. You'll see it all when it happens. I don't know. I wish Sergeant King was here. Don't you worry. He ain't gonna miss no inspection if he can have it. Here comes the Colonel. Dog. Here they come. How did it get so late? I don't know. Who's gonna report? The Sergeant ain't here, Irvin. You. Oh, no. You salute real good. Oh, no. Now, I go ahead. But I... But don't step on that board. But I don't know. Oh, Frank. Help. ready for inspection, sir. My finest barracks, sir. It was immaculate when I inspected last week. Looks fine. Yes, indeed. the meaning of this? Welcome in the Colonel, sir. You! Where's Sergeant King? Uh, 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 I, I reckon he's on sick call, sir. Sick call? He'll be on sick call? Sir, there's a, there's a madman running this barracks. Well, never mind that. Never mind. Let's get on with the inspection. Uh, Ten, what? <laughs> get out of here. The Colonel is here. <laughs> Uh, 
Explained. <laughs> well, well, sir. We went to this moving picture show, and there were eight sailors sitting behind us. And they took to cussing out the air corps and and as saying as how our officers ain't half as good as naval officers. So you fought them all night. Yes. Sir. What was the name of the picture? Oh. <laughs> it was a John Wayne picture, sir. <laughs> named named Forward March, American Battalion of the Air. <laughs> In the wild blue, it was a sneak preview, sir, maybe. <laughs> and how do you account for the mysterious aroma of alcohol? Uh -huh. <laughs> maybe them sailors poured whiskey all over them, so you'd think there's really at the purple grotto. Uh -huh. <laughs> you two men are leaving for gunnery school, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, we let gunnery school discipline you. As for you, Sergeant King, I'd like to speak to you in the orderly room. I think the colonel would like to say a few words, too. Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> Look out for that blasted booby trap! <laughs> Short-circuited. <laughs> I don't mind telling you, I was right worried about Sergeant King. I mean, I kindly felt that him being in trouble was a little bit my fault, at least part ways anyhow. It's on the bulletin board, Will. The gunnery school is. You made it. Swell. We better start packing. Ben, what's going on in the orderly room? Can't tell. The shades is down. The captain was screaming some, but it's quiet now. <laughs> Sergeant King. <laughs> Private King. Forty-year-old Private King. You, you mean you ain't a sergeant no more? Oh, no sympathy, please. I'm happy, do you hear me? I'm happy. And do you know why I'm happy? I'm happy because they took away my stripes. They took away my barracks. But that wasn't enough of them, no. We can't have this man around here setting a bad example for the new men, says the colonel. And the captain says, how will we get rid of him? And the colonel says, you got a bunch of men shipping out to gunnery school. Add his name to the list. <laughs> but I'm happy, do you hear me? I'm happy because I'm going and you're staying. I'm leaving you a thousand miles behind. I'm 40 years old. I'm a private. And I'm going to gunnery school. And I'm happy, do you hear me? I'm happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Sergeant. Private! <laughs> I ain't staying here. Oh, yes, you are. You couldn't have passed that. Sure, I passed that, I tell you. <laughs> you ain't gonna gu gun Sure, <laughs> we're all gonna be together. Oh, no. <laughs> He's crying. Sergeant. <laughs> when you get old, it's hard to control your emotions. <laughs> Cry, Sergeant. We'll all be together, you and me and Will. Why, we're going to be like the Three Musketeers. No, no, no. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Pa. Hey, wait for me, Pa.
chicken mule, well mule, I say, well I ain't got time to kiss you now, my mules are run away. <laughs> I took my wife to the barnyard and I set her down to supper. Well, she got choked on a turkey leg and stuck her nose in the butter. Stuck her nose in the butter. Stuck her nose in the butter. Well, she got choked on a turkey leg and stuck her nose in the butter. <laughs> 